First of all, she's been here before. Happy to have her back. Gail Casper, life and business coach, you know, nationwide motivational speaker and author of the new book, which I read. I think I read it before it was out. Gail, Another Day Without a Cage, yes. which is a very emotional book. It's not your ordinary uh, how to live life book. You go through a lot of setbacks and uh, you met some people that were not nice along the way, yet you give people tips along the way on how to deal with it. Your tips are very good. Did you know about those tips when you had the setbacks? In other words, did, could you react as easily as your tips are here? Um, when I wrote that book, it was a it was an evolution for myself because as I was writing it, I was getting it. And that's one of the reasons I talk about failure and how important it is to success because today when people fail, they want to quit. They figure, okay, it's not for me and I'm done. The reality is you're one step closer to achieving and you're changing who you are if you have failed along the way. That, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And when we're down, we focus on the holes we've got. One of the stories in the book, I talk about arranging for the Philadelphia Flyers to meet Michael Jordan. And it didn't end up happening where they got together. And that was devastating to me. I ended up going to see Michael Jordan when he was in town and thanking him for agreeing to do that. I missed the entire success story that exactly. was there when it happened. Exactly. You know, I yeah. take it into schools today. I talk to people about it today. But when it happened, I missed it. Well, what does the word cage mean in this book? I've read it, so I'd rather you answer it. Yeah, it's, it's all about stepping out to find yourself, really. You're holding yourself hostage. You're holding yourself in that cage. You can really step out and find yourself. And one of the things that um, I talk about extensively in the book is that once I started to create a path that led me to be a professional speaker, and even when I was leaving an organization to become a professional speaker, I had said to the people I was working with, wouldn't it be great if I could speak to a group of CEOs in a year? One year to the day, I was speaking to a group of CEOs. Once I opened the door to step out to take the risks, my life started to unfold, and I exactly. followed it serendipitously. Yeah, and very often, getting out of the cage is getting out of your environment. Ah, you you know? move. Yeah, just absolutely. Move. You know, you're stuck in hell, and you just you're so comfortable with the fire, you just sit there and get right. singed. You got to walk out, and that's the hardest thing to tell people. How do you, you know? How do you tell people when you go out and speak around mm -hmm. the country to all these groups? Do you talk about being happy? It is all about being happy. It's about figuring out who you are. And one of the things, I, I just did a, um, a whole week of speeches to high school students last week. And you know, everybody's got this, I want to be an athlete, I want to be an actress, I want to be a superstar. And the reality is you can be going after those things, but you can go after lots of things in life. And I think we get lost into thinking that it's one route, one dream, one goal. We don't stop and think that, hey, we've got lots of talents, but you've got to be working and developing all of them. If you stay on one track, you're pretty boring. <laughs> if you don't constantly change. But that's America right now in exactly. some respects. They're thinking, okay, this is it. One job, one career, mm, done. And one of the biggest things I learned from writing this book was that, okay, what is a complete person? You know, really is that you could lose the money, you can lose clients, job, whatever, but it doesn't take away from you. You still know that you have yourself, you've got your strengths, and you can get out there and utilize them and find a place where they belong. Exactly. It's a matter of understanding the core of who you are, living that core, and understanding that you'll be happy that way. How does a person go through uh, uh, self-analysis to figure out what's really important to them? That's a really tough question. First of all, you, usually that happens when you're, uh, you lost your job or you're doubting yourself or relationships over. But wait a second, there's happy people out there. Yeah. Happy oh, there's who say they're happy. Yep. Who are still not happy enough. Yep. Well, so. they want that elusive, whatever that thing is that they, they they're just, there's no they're, calm in their life. They want a calm and they don't know how to get it. And, and some of them are just caught, like you said, they're in a routine. So, but when you're in that routine, that means you're not stepping out, you're not taking classes, you're not discovering hobbies, you're just doing the same thing every single day. You have got to step out and do something different and take a risk and develop you. You want to figure out where happiness is, it means in continuing to develop yourself. You're never done. But sometimes in life we think, okay, I'm finished. We'll I went right, to school, I'm done. Right back with more tough questions about the, uh, what is life and what is good life and uh, how, how can it be achieved by Three people who are writing about it, teaching about it. We'll be back right here on Voice of Reason after this.